Welcome, Lola Lennox. It's a joy. Hi, it's a joy finally to connect with you. We kind of yeah, miss, you too. We missed each other like ships in the night in Ibiza when you were over, and I haven't seen you for ages. And, and we're friends. You've been busy with your songwriting and your singing, and it sounds like the whole lockdown thing kind of focused you onto that. Yeah, it was like a weird synchronicity where. I'd been writing for a long time and developing and kind of doing a lot of music behind the scenes, purposefully not sharing it because I just wanted to be in my own space to find my sound and really get comfortable in the music and feel like I could release something that really felt like me. Um, and then I planned in the beginning of 2020, this is the this is the year I shot a music video in the end of 2019. I was like, now I'm going to start releasing. Um, little did I know what was going to come in March, but um, when it did come, you know, I thought, you know, the world is changing, but I don't want to adjust my whole life around, you know, fear of the unknown. So I went full steam ahead and it just happened to be like the year where everybody else was like at home in their pajamas, like kind of going, God, I'm a bit bored. I was at home. But I was I was busier than ever, like making singles and music and um, having interviews with different people and just getting the music out there and heard, but all of it virtually. So it was it was an unusual way to launch, but it it worked for me that year. So amazing. It, and I think creativity. Re I mean, I'm a big fan of creativity. Um, and I think the it's it was one of the unexpected outcomes of the pandemic that people because they were stuck at home and wondering what to do, that they they lent in very much into creativity, whether it's writing, singing, dancing, making things, whatever. And uh, it seemed to be like, for example, books, my my thing, books. And like so many people now reading books more than ever mm -hmm. because of the lockdown. So it has mm -hmm. had a massive impact on people. I think creativity, like often it comes from a very quiet space within and it has this kind of, for me, if I if I get that spark of or I want to make something, it's coming from something quite pure. And, and often in life, you know, we wake up, we get the coffee, we have this schedule to do. And we don't, because of all the doing, we can get a little bit um, disjointed from that subtle parts of our brain that... For me, those are the, where the magic can really happen and figuring out what, what is it I want to say or put into a song or what is the sound of this song and the feeling of the song that I want to express. Um, and so getting quiet, it's the same with meditation, getting quiet. It it can really unlock some some special creativity within you. On the on the flip side, also big moments in life, like being excited, being, going to a festival and seeing like huge you know, a big stage with loads of crowd, like that can also be equally inspiring. So I think we were missing that, but there is definitely something to just getting quiet and sitting with yourself. I mean, I think a lot of people, I have a lot of friends who felt like they work through a lot of emotional baggage as well, just because of how quiet everything was. It was like, now's an opportunity for me to like dig deep and kind of like work through some of this stuff. So yeah, there was there was opportunity in the the not doing of that of those of that time. Oh, interesting. So uh, it sounds like for you, creativity and songwriting and your your uh, quest as a creative person is quite a spiritual endeavor. What would you say to that? S spiritual is such a big word. Um, I, I think it, it's going inward for sure. It's finding that space in your heart music awake awakens you you listen to it and your heart opens and your mind kind of goes into this other world that feels more expansive and more beautiful and um you know I, I take a lot of walks and that's when I really listen to music and I feel like I go off on some sort of like inner uh adventure when I'm listening to these songs they can be nostalgic or they just take you to different worlds where <clears throat> I'm just walking down the street but it feels like a completely different scene um, so there's definitely, I mean, so many people get so much from music and songs, and I think it, that is a very uh, spiritual and very pure and, and beautiful thing. Mm, gorgeous. And when what's your process for writing songs? How do they arrive with you? It, it depends. Like, um, I've been writing a lot more by myself recently. Um, so as opposed to writing in 
in a session with other people like over over lockdown I was doing some sessions on zoom with people um they were like in the UK and I was in America and we just figure it out but um yeah the last this year I've been writing a lot more by myself and I've just been sitting at the piano and I just kind of play some chords and some sort of like shapes on the piano and you know it's it's getting to be more and more when I don't work with somebody else I can really go into that state of flow where it's just it just kind of unveils itself like I'm not pushing so play the chords um and then I'll usually start with a verse sometimes I start with the chorus because it's like the, the chorus is the obviously the most potent moment of the song that you remember so sometimes that's the melody that comes through first because it's the strong one it's this balance between being totally free and being very discerning between e editing certain parts of the melody because like you could have a simple melody you could start off with something but you want to make it sound special and different so I can start with the melody say it's like a kind of shape and then where does the next shape go and like it's subtle changes within the development of the song that make this kind of like unwrapping a present of of a melody within a verse so yeah it's this fine line between flow and going does that work oh I don't know like that's something I think when I was younger I didn't have the discernment as much I go yeah it's great I love it it's so fun and I'd kind of get average now I'm like unpacking unpacking does that work how does this feel well, maybe that doesn't work for me like there is a, a lot of you know I'm trying to perfect it and craft it and carve it out um and then once I've kind of shaped a melody often words kind of naturally start to just come out and I just have this notebook and I'm scribbling words down and like the shapes of the word, you know, one word will trigger another image, which will then be the next lyric or it's kind of very natural. Like yesterday I sat down and wrote a song and like, you know, it doesn't take that long, like probably from top to finish, like an hour, um, just piano voice and lyrics, but because it comes out quite naturally. Um, and that, that for me, it's really refreshing when the lyrics they've been coming very naturally recently. And like, you know, I've spent had times when I've just been sitting like banging my head against the wall, trying to get the lyric out. And like when it just comes and I'm like, oh, that's what the song's about. It, it's so nice. Cause in sessions, sometimes I, sometimes I hear songs on the radio and I'm like, that's a bit, that's a session song. I'm not criticizing anyone. I love everyone that's making music and doing what they're passionate about. But there's this kind of formula within a session where it's like, this song's going to be about this. And we're going to use all the work, like say, this song's going to be about heartbreak. And we're going to use all the trigger words around heartbreak. And it just sounds a little sterile um, and predictable. No criticism, criticism, but there's something when I'm letting go of the rules and just letting it come in and come through where I'm like, I don't really know what the song's about, but these words are coming together and they make they, they make they're putting a, p a picture of me and whatever it is that I'm trying to express here. And it just feels more like it just feels more authentic and flow. And maybe it completely doesn't work, but maybe it does. So it's cool. How do you know the difference of when it's working, when it's not working? What are your indicators for that? I don't know if there is a formula, like a, a way to predict it, because sometimes sometimes I write a song and I love doing it and it really flows. But then I listen back to it a few days later with fresh ears and I'm like, no, that's it's like it's I learned through that process, but like it's not something I'd share. Sometimes I write songs and it's a struggle to like get the get the music out get the words out understand what it is and it's like it can sometimes be a bit of like oh god and then that can be a really great song so like to be honest there isn't a formula and what what what's next for Lola Lennox what are you bringing out this year what's what's on your agenda so I'm releasing my next single it's called want more because I was in a place when I wrote it where I think as human beings, we always have this feeling of like never being satisfied and we have these dreams and aspirations and goals for ourselves and then we get them and we're like, okay, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And then those can be big things like life goals or those can be small things like I want that t-shirt. And like, I, I, I think with social media and being able to compare and seeing everybody else's life and kind of living in this highly you know, consumerist society where it's all about what we have, how how we look, what we're doing, it's like... I just get exhausted by it all. And um, so the song is expressing that. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm never satisfied. No matter how much I, I try to, to obtain for myself, I get it and I'm on to the next thing. And 
you know, I think the the Buddhists say like desire is the root of all suffering. So that's what the, the song's about, want more. So <laughs> tell me about the video that goes with the single. Uh, so I shot the music video with a good friend of mine called Grace Pickering. She's an awesome music video director and photographer. And I've actually known her since I was like 16 years old. Um, and I was spending time like thinking about what how I wanted to express the meaning of the song through the video. Um, and yeah, it's it's a lot of um, I'm using color kind of as an expression, like the some of the scenes are like I'm wearing all white and then in it kind of starts to evolve into like I start to wear more and more red and the red is like a symbol of this desire this craving this always the wanting more and this kind of evolving I was saying to Grace like it's let's flip flop between um reality and oblivion so reality being this kind of stark place where I, I'm kind of like everything feels very literal and real and then the want more feeling <clears throat> this feeling of desire and this feeling of like un an unquenched thirst is kind of like obliterated, like a bit surreal. I don't know where we're going, but it feels like, yeah, this is like altered reality. So we had fun putting the uh, treatment together and creating it on the day. It's all shot on 16 millimeter film, which is just so cinematic and beautiful looking. And how do you feel about live performances, given that a lot of your work, by the sounds of it, was done studio based? when you're when you're in the studio like I connect the song but I'm trying to like make it something that's an imprint forever but there's something when you're playing live it feels like an in-house party or something it's you know it's not all fun it's also quite serious and can be quite scary beforehand and like it's, it's pressure but when you feel good in the moment of performing live it's like it's very freeing and just a it's a great experience. And I guess you get the kind of feedback that you want from your work um, immediately. And it's that, it's that it's a really nice feedback loop. Yeah, it feels like um, an, like an arrival point of you've put on all this work behind the scenes and people haven't really been able to see it. And then the night that you get to share it, it feels like kind of like an amalgamation of it, all the effort that you've put in. And it's kind of like a celebration of that. And how would you describe your music and, and who's really inspired you in your journey? I mean, since I was little, like, I was always listening to the old classics, like Aretha Franklin, Dusty Springfield, uh, The Supremes, like, I like die for music from the 60s and I think it's more than just the fact that it's from the 60s with these kind of like organic sounds it's also just like their singing is off the charts like the the singers from them the powerhouse female vocalist Adele as well Amy Winehouse mm -hmm. Joss Stone as well like Duffy like I love those kind of like powerful voices that are just like so expressive um so for me it's kind of trying to bring a little melting pot of the past and the present in together because I don't want it to sound like a pastiche of the old times but I want it to have the flavor and the soul and the roots of the old times mm. but I also want it to have a beat and a hit and make you want to move and have something that's fresh and exciting to your ears something different that you haven't heard before and I guess you could call that pop but tell me about your singing career how, how did you get started and when did you know yeah I, I can no, I, this is this is where I want to go. So when I was a kid, um, I would go on the road with my mom. She'd be on tour and I'd watch these kind of electrifying performances in a room full of people going mad and just like not mad, but just like, wow, people were like st like startled by the power of the music. And I was just, I'd sit there and I'd, I'd be like, wow, this is this is quite powerful stuff. And it was like great just seeing you know the behind the scenes and the rehearsals and and the bands coming together and just something there was something just magical about music but that didn't make me go like I want to be a singer I think what I went to school and I had two um I had two singing teachers they were sisters and one would do more like classical I did kind of like an array of different genres she one would do like classical and one would do like jazz musical theater pop and uh, they were so great they really like took an interest in supporting me and like giving me like a wide range of material to learn and we did like school concerts and choirs and competitions and um I think that really like gave me a base of learning of like how to approach learning a song and like how to pull out the flavors and the personalities of uh, melody and lyrics um the choirs gave me like a, a ear for harmony 
Um, and I think it was in doing all of that where I was like, this is what I like, it like lights me up. I love this so much. I just want to make this my life. Mm. But I was doing all the genres and my singing teacher was like, you know, I think if you audition for the music schools in the UK, I think you had a, a shot of getting in. And I was like, okay, cool, fun experience. Like, this is a challenge. I never considered like, oh, if I get in, will I go? I knew if I, if I got in, it wouldn't have felt like the right path for me, but I just didn't consider that I would ever get in. Um, so I did the audition for Royal Academy of Music and to my surprise got in and it was such a compliment because like, wow, that is like one of the most prestigious music schools in the UK. And, and then when I left, I put a band together in, in London and we started doing some shows and I was writing and doing some different sessions with producers but I did I was struggling a little bit to like kind of get my foot in the door and really get the ball rolling in the UK um and then my mum was playing in uh she'd done an album um called Nostalgia and it was all jazz standards like covers from the past and she was doing a performance in LA and she was like you know would you like to do a backing singing there for the show and I was like yeah that sounds really fun I'd love to do that and that gave me a visa to the US um because it was yeah it was in LA and um went and did that and I was like oh while I'm here maybe I can do some sessions with different producers and I remember like I called up a few people I knew and I got a schedule through for like here's your sessions for the next two weeks and I was like yes because it was like every day writing sessions every day and I was like now's my chance like I, I can prove that I can do this now because in the UK it was like it was like I was trying to get sustained amount of time in the studio and then I was like right I'm just gonna stay in LA and I just kept extending kept extending kept extending um I was doing sessions writing lots of different songs um and then yeah that kind of set me on the path of being in America and writing and I was um I spent a long time kind of developing and finding my sound and you know if I could go back I felt like now looking back it was it was it was a little too long I I got a little bit like I need to get music out now like toward the end but it was also precious time as well because it did give me that ability to explore um without the pressures of like okay we've got to get the next song out I've got to get the next song out so yeah and then in the beginning of 2020 was when I released um was it no was it yeah it was my first single I think my first single came out at the end of 2019 I think and then I started to release more music in 2020. Um, um, when you look to the future what's what's in your vision what what would you like to be on your road ahead? I mean for me it's like creating is like what really just makes me so happy so if I can have like a space I have a space to create now but if I can just be able to go into that place every day not every day but as consistently as possible to write and just feel like I'm putting parts of myself into music and like having that then like I'm I'm very like hands-on in the produ production phase as well so like then you know letting that song cook and like building it up um, and just like really putting my myself and into the process of creating and then you know getting to share it with the world obviously I, I, I love for, as, like for people to hear it and enjoy it like it's such a special thing for me when I hear that you know I get messages from people saying like oh it really I was having a bad day and I heard the song and it made me feel better or like whatever it is so obviously like I'd love to start touring and getting to play more live more and just like being able to live as a musician and having it's such a I, I recognize how lucky I am that I get to do it I work really hard at it to try to be my best and um yeah just to have a happy and also a balanced life because sometimes I can get too strong with it and then and then I get the pressures and then I get anxious and stressed and that then it can implode a little bit because then I'm like, what am I doing this for? It's the thing I love. I love it so much, but it's hurting me as well. So I'm definitely learning to walk that path of like balance and like self-preservation. And that's 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 still a lesson I'm going through right now. But it's I think it's one for everybody to learn, like finding balance in life. So what what is your um, sort of routine musically? uh went on a on a normal how, how much are you working how much are you keeping up with with your music side and and what 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 does that balance look like it depends on what stage I'm at but if I'm if I'm writing I'll I have like a studio space 
which is a recent thing. I was before I was writing everything at home. We had like a little mini home studio just in the living room. But now I have like a proper studio. So it feels like I can go to work, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, if I'm writing, I just either sit down at the piano alone with my notebook. And then I'll put it down. Like once I have a song formed, then I'll put it down in like logic. So like I'll record just like a rough demo or I'll, you know, work with people in a session, whether that's in their studio or on Zoom or at my studio, it depends. Um, production phase is like going into the nitty gritty. It's like, it's so fun because you're like bringing out these colors and um, making, giving the song flavor and personality like this. But the production is like, th it, that's the part of like, you know, I think we have like 200 tracks in a song or something insane like that, where it's like, it, it's so much more layered and nuanced and detailed than I ever realized. Um, but I've really been enjoying, like I've learned a lot with the production, like sitting in the room, because my boyfriend's the producer of most of my singles that I've released, Braden Wright is his name. And he's, um, I sit with him and he, he just goes through and we don't try, we try not to just like, you know, you can you can just have a sound and put it down but we're like no no no. we don't want just like the sound from the computer like how can we mess with the sound and you know there's so many different like plugins and softwares that you can just like make the sound authentic and different and a bit weird or cool so um yeah we we really dive deep into every single track and try to make it something that feels special to talk to you about your music and your passion and your creativity is just wonderful and I think in our chat today, people can get a real sense of who you are as a human, as well as a, a beautiful singer. And um, I'm sure everyone's going to be so excited to listen up to what's coming next, see your new videos and and uh, look forward to hearing this amazing music coming through. So I want to thank you so much for having such a lovely chat today about creativity. Well, I so appreciate having the space to talk about it and to sit with you for a little bit because it's Aww. been some years since I saw you and you're just such a special soul and I absolutely love what you're doing here and I've been list I've listened to some of the other podcast episodes and it's really important for people to be talking about creativity and life and the having these deeper conversations because it's really ins I listen to so many podcasts and it's really inspiring to hear you know the stories of people's lives so thank you for pulling that out of people on this platform mm -hmm. it's just so nice isn't it I mean we can appreciate art and music on so many levels we can listen to music be social dance enjoy and love it and, and have our emotions pushed up but and it's so nice to know where it's coming from and the the kind of character behind the sounds and all of this this adds such richness to it I think, to to really get to know artists and to get to hear them talking about their work is just dreamy. Totally. So for now, I want to say big, big thank you. Big hug, cyber hug. And, um, cyber lots, hugs to you too. Cyber hugs. And, lots and of to love. everyone listening as well, cyber yeah. hugs. Cyber <laughs> hugs. <laughs> lots Bye. Of love. Bye. Lots of love. Bye.